I'll start off by saying I am not a DBA at all. I've been a Linux nerd since 1998, um, and somewhere around 1999, um, Somebody was like, hey, there's this MySQL thing. We are really sick of installing Oracle. And um, it's been on my resume since then. doesn't mean I know anything. Um, I work at a company that has an office in town called Acquia. So um, at my disposal, I have about, I don't know, at any given day, 3,000 customer databases on which they might have hundreds of databases on a single machine. And it's all in Amazon. Um, and running a database in Amazon is really kind of hard. Um, so I have some interesting challenges now at this point in my career. However, not the case in the past. Um, let's see. Yes. I've um, been at it since 1999. Um, and I've gotten to use the black hole storage engine um, more than a few super excellent times. Um, so as a sysadmin, you're always joking about dev null. Um, this is the dev null in the database world, and it is awesome. Um, and you know, I've talked to quite a few people, and um, I'm one of the few that's used it. And I've seriously, seriously, seriously broken things beyond repair. Um, and and I like to share these things with people. Um, I mentor quite a few people, and. <laughs> Um, I've done hiring, and when I'm hiring, I'm always like, you know, what's the worst thing you've ever done, and how did you recover from that? I care about the recovery. Um, I care about taking risks. Um, so breaking things is a good thing. Um, and yes, uh, <laughs> the confessing breaking things to uh, to rather famous people. One of like I'm a big Pearl person, and um, the author of MySQL DBD knows one of my biggest failures and he reminded me of it when I was at Percona Live in April and it, it sticks like the things I've done are that epic <laughs> um, yes for years that was done in nine in 2009 I think is when I did that super thing that will be coming up in some future slides um, yes okay so <laughs> um, the way I cope with breaking things are cute pictures um, we use them as a kind of currency um, at work. And um, I ping on the word bunny and variations of spelling bunny in chat. Um, and people pay me off for doing really bad, difficult things in pictures. And yes, so, and I'm not very good at photo credits. So at the end, there's like a, a source slide. And I don't, try not to use photos and presentations just because of copyright. Anyway. OK, so I'm going to cover loosely and mostly linearly um, through my timeline um, uses of the first time I used the black hole engine, um, the data migration, which um, it was pretty bad. Um, <laughs> ghetto raid, um, mistakes in an ODB. I learned a lot about an ODB um, during that. So that was a very big pivotal learning thing and I have a lot of appreciation for an ODB. Um, and when you don't know how to do something very well, you'll rely on a tool. And for a long time, I thought that this project, it's the link to it's at the end of the slides, but um, I thought mysqltuner.pl would solve all of my problems and it prints out recommendations. That's super. I don't know how to tune a server. Okay. Let me, you know, let me run this, and it'll tell me exactly what's wrong. And it does print out handy number, like handy percentages and numbers and stuff, and some very horrible Perl um, if you actually read the source. Um, but anyway, I used it a lot for many years, and that is a big embarrassment to me. But I know better now. Um, and my ISAM, um, when I started, it was it was just what there was. Um, not a lot of choices there. And there are good. Re I there have been times in recent months that I've actually recommended its use, um, but and there's sometimes that you can't get around it. But um, there are some bad stories in here too about it. And then benchmarking. Um, I'm a math person. Whoopsie. And um, I like the art of benchmarking and coming up with numbers and making pictures and stuff and I would like to do much more of it in my job but I don't get to but this 
we'll cover one of my first and most goofy times in benchmarking where I was new to a company. I'm like, I'm going to fix all your problems. Here's some benchmarks. And it didn't go swell. Anyway. <laughs> um, so I'm one of, I also love squirrel pictures. So um, that is actually a squirrel. Um, so this is the command I use quite often um, when I do get the chance. You know, I'm usually working in a master master situation where one is active and one is kind of passive and kind of passive, long story. Um, and this is the command I use. Don't write it to the bin log, alter that table engine, turn it into a black hole. Um, so the first time I used it was in 2008, maybe 2009, I'm not sure. Um, and there was a business need for it in that there was a table getting created just for the salespeople. Um, they just needed this data and they were just doing texty searches on some data. And um, their random, really crazy queries were taking down the master database that was actually the useful one. So I replicated it somewhere and I turned it on the master into the black hole engine and then this is one of the cases I have used my ISAM um, in production, and it was a good choice um, on their specific slave for creating reports. So that was one of the good valid uses I've, I've used it for. One of the sad uses was very, very, very recently um, at my current place. Um, there, our architecture depends heavily, if you know Drupal, um, on caching, like caches seriously what keeps Drupal afloat in a high load environment. And um, there's this one table called cache form. So if you have any familiarity with Drupal, you know that the structure is basically some keys and some giant text blobs, which is just serialized PHP. And it can get very, very big on the order of um, individual things being like way too big for um, memcached for sure. But like, <laughs> like, you know, values that are up to a gig or more. Um, I just, what's that? It'll happen. <laughs> um, serialized PHP, which is in the cache form table, um, can be a little crazy. So replication wasn't keeping up, because this is like a heavy writing, like Every time an editor goes and does something, I'm not quite sure because I'm not an application developer. I just have to understand how the database works to support them. Um, every single time that they would do it, it would you know rewrite the indexes. It was very very heavy, and um, that would then re replicate to something. And you want to have HA. You want it to be able to fail over. But if your replication if it's hours behind because of this table and all of the right contentions going to it. And it doesn't matter anyway, because you're probably going to flush it at some time anyway. It's not getting actively accessed. Why bother with it? And you don't, you're in an emergency, situa emergency situation, and you don't have time to, I'm going to filter this table, and I'm just not going to replicate it. Yeah, that's really easy if you have that kind of luxury, and that customer isn't under some massive load because they just went live with some site you're going to just say, I'm going to throw away the contents on, on the end, and it's not going to be an I.O. bound operation anymore. So DevNull for the win. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I mean, it, it took me a while to get to that point. I did a lot of just truncate table blah for some time until I was just like, forget it. I can't keep this up. It's going to go down when I'm asleep. Um, so that's another valid use. OK, on to the data migration story. Um, so let's see. This is one of my, I got very fed up with any kind of diagramming softwares. Um, I just took Woo! a bit. <laughs> um, this will kind of explain what's going on. So um, I've been kind of doing drupal -y support on the operation side for some time. This was a live Drupal 5 site that um, was a proof of concept that went live. Um, and it was in Amazon because the developer was just like, I'm going to play with this thing. Hey, let's make it live. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And then there was like a, oh, you know, as a company, it's not secure enough where it is. We need to put it somewhere secure. 
And this particular company had a data center in the UK um, with no less than two levels of VLAN that you had to you know, work with network administrators to get through um, at any given point. Sometimes it was deeper, um, depending on the data. So my particular application was going to be stood up behind two levels. Um, and it had to be a live cutover um, because it was an important product at this point because proof of concepts become a proof, you know, like, as we know. Um, and to make it even more exciting, because this was a highly secure company, there was this SSL VPN thing. Um, I have no idea what it was, really, but it required that I use a Windows laptop, A, and B, that it had this interactive thing that would pop up and say, hey, you've been on for eight hours. Would you like me to disconnect you? And, you, and timing out in you know, 120 seconds or whatever it was, like perilous. Like it was seriously Mission Impossible stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was a lot of data that I had to send across because, well, let's see. Oopsie. Wrong way. All right. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so my solution was not deal with, because as being a highly secure company that followed real standards that you don't get in startups, um, we all were trained in ITIL version 3 and certified. Um, so uh, in order to get any change done, there was like a change review board, and there were meetings, and, and time frames, and rollback plans, and all this stuff, and I just wanted my holes to be open to shove data through. Um, so SS, you know, SSH tunnels, but they were contingent on this, me down here with the, the VPN, to have the whole connection persist. Um, there's probably maybe a way to get past this now that I'm older and wiser, but I don't know. I'm not a network person. I just make SSH tunnels. Um, <laughs> so anyway, so I didn't sleep for a week because of that eight-hour VPN. Um, well, I did, but in shifts. Like I would trust it to be like, okay, three hours. You can nap for three hours, get up, check the VPN. So it was, it was, and I had that tight deadline that I had to hit. Um, so I didn't sleep for a week. Um, I literally lived on energy drinks, um, Greek yogurt, because my stomach was really upset not sleeping. And, and I know that's not like the best thing for your stomach, but and then chocolate covered espresso beans because needed the punch on top of the energy beverages. Um, <laughs> so I am, uh, yeah, I'm a vegetarian. Um, it upset my stomach so horribly, and I've heard other DBAs go through this. Um, I couldn't eat vegetables for an entire year because they made me so nauseated. Something happened. <laughs> um, so this is this is what I went through. Um, but it was it was for the, it was like the particular application made me feel good in the community it was serving. So I really wanted it to work because I, I felt like it was an, I, I built an importance around it. So that's what kept me awake. Um, anyway, so here is a live shot from that week. Um, <laughs> my cat, I was doing dueling laptops because, you know, one I didn't want to touch. The other one was for other work. And they get very hot. Um, <laughs> My cat actually is probably running Debian as per usual, and um, he had tried so many uh, login attempts that it had filled the root partition and <laughs> and crashed my laptop. <laughs> that is him crashing my laptop right before you see the kernel panic, no doubt. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that was, I mean, it was a good experience. Um, I don't see that much in data migration. Um, and it was, it was quite a feat. Um, and I'm still in touch with one of the people on that team. So um, anyway. All right, so the ghetto raid thing. Um, sad, cheap raid, not raid at all, but we'll get to that in the next slide. Um, so uh, I was running that same site now. It's, it's, it's live, I've got it in my, my data center behind the VLANs and with all of the security and all of that stuff. But um, at the time, the, it was the, it, we had mandated as a company only use 5147 enterprise um, 
I'm not sure what else was available, but I mean, it was not the newest thing. Um, and I was finding myself seriously I.O. bound. And these are, this is with actual hardware, like not Amazon stuff, which is what I do now. Um, and you know, same ITIL company, I would have, trying to get my fiber channel cards ordered and installed and then configured was just like, you know, it was months on. It was literally months on, and I was badly I.O. bound because there were these giant tables and so on and so forth. So um, I think I was given one SSD, like they happen to have, you know, <laughs> yay! <laughs> um, and um, the thing about 5147 is that you could, while well, you could not sim link the actual IBDs if you're doing file per table, um, you could sim link the entire folder and have it work okay. So me, I'm like, I'm just going to split out my workload across these disks. Um, that sounds great. Um, by sim linking the folders, it was all like I tested everything a bazillion times, trust me, because the ITIL, um, it forces you to really prove your work and do the timings and the rollback plan and the, the tests. Um, so yeah, um, that was the intent, was split it across with the folders trick. Um, anyway, <laughs> it's individual disks. There was no redundancy. Um, that was maybe like a, a gentle con in the um, intro slides. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't, I, while I tested it really well, or so I thought, I did not accommodate for the fact that they were partitions and disks. And the, okay, so the MV command does not detect sparse file types, and this is where I had that huge lesson about what an, an ODB file actually is. It is a sparse file with holes in it. And when you move it across partition boundaries, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so anyway, like cut to 3 a.m., room full of my colleagues, and suddenly there are these weird errors during my whole, like, I'm going to do this great you know, thing, split my rights, yay. Um, and uh, suddenly nothing's working. And I had done step by step what I had planned out to do. Um, and oops. <laughs> um, yeah, so I restored from a, a backup. Um, yeah, and that is the story that the DBD, my SQL dude, remembers to this day. <laughs> The, the, no, 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 it was the actual boundaries, the partitions, um, and the command MV, CP honors sparse. Had I used CP, I would not have this story. And I would not know as much about I had done folders, like, I'm just going to, you know, whatever. So <laughs> um, now I have more respect and understanding of an ODB after this little foray, and I had no idea, I mean, as a Linux person, I'd never really known anything about sparse file types. My history doesn't go that deep. Um, so, yeah. <sighs> All right. Um, and again, I am not a DBA. I am a Linux sysadmin who happens to get all of the MySQL things because, oh, you know, you've done this before. You can do it again. <laughs> Certainly, you're a subject matter expert. Uh, <laughs> And um, anyway, so the MySQL tuner seems like a great idea. Uh, and you know, it's, it generates numbers, it has percentages, it, it gives you recommendations. I really wanted, wanted for some sort of thing to be the DBA that I was not. And um, it simply is not that. And usually the recommendations it spits out are regarding max heap and query cache. Um, and I don't know if anybody should ask. Does anybody here consider themselves a MySQL DBA? OK. <laughs> so query cache, you'll see like, uh, is anybody here a Drupalist? OK. Is anybody here a WordPressist? Or whatever they are. OK, super. Um, so sometimes you'll see recommendations from the communities that say, you know, your query cache, you should increase it, or something like that. No. <laughs> <laughs> it is um, so MySQL is great and threaded and and things are amazing now over the years they've made huge improvements but um, query cache remains and it's going to change in 5.6 
uh, but in 5.5, where most of us are, um, is a single threaded, you know, contentious, like, I am going to wait for the query cache to look it up and determine it's not there, and then I will actually de decide if I'm, you know, and it's just, it's not somewhere where you want to be, and, and it masquerades itself in the process list as a number of things like waiting for statistics, or generating, waiting for statistics, or waiting for disk, or whatever. And um, it is, it's, if anything, in most cases, you're going to be turning off query cache um, because it is, if, if it's not enabled, it'll just say, I'm going to do my query. I'm not going to wait in this long, long line to decide if it's in the query cache or not. Um, so, yeah, and then the max heap recommendations that it would spit out. Or I'm not running my SAM. Uh, sure, my temporary tables are in this heap format and stuff like that, but it's an ODB. It's largely irrelevant for an ODB. There have been some times where I have um, increased it, but um, uh, just to show you the bad pearl that it is, this is the most recent release. Um, is anybody here a pearlist? Super, my people. Um, I write bad pearl. My last year's thing had some bad pearl in it. Um, uh, you'll see like this here, and just <laughs> general. <laughs> this is the. I. I mean, part of me is like, I will fix her stuff, and this is where I'm probably not the best open source citizen because I looked at the code and I was just like, oh god, no. Um, no, no, that's self care. <laughs> <laughs> that's good yeah. <laughs> So um, anyway, yeah, this is what it spits out. And I will show you the data from this actual database again later in another slide with pretty graphs and stuff I actually do use to make decisions now. Um, but this is how I used to try to make decisions before. Um, and it just it seems to give out the same things. It's, it's saying, you know, OK, try increasing, increasing query cache size because there are too many low memory prunes. Actually, you have the data on the low memory prunes later and know that it's not true. Um, and yeah, full table scans, you, you tend to get those a lot in uh, a general platform um, database as it is because that's just how they are, um, especially with Drupal. Um, I, I don't have experience with WordPress, but um, the modules will make very interesting database um, tables. Um, I'll say that. So. Um, yeah, it's giving you all these just more ends and sadness. All right. Okay, so here's another foray into my Sam. Um, this backup is same same thing that I spent all that time migrating. There's this one table, and you know it's called the node table if, in Drupal, and it has some important stuff in it. Um, stuff that possibly you would want ACID compliance for. Um, anyway, there was only one entry in it, and it was a largely read-only site. So I'm like, I'll just turn into my SAM. You know, it's quicker to read text, and I had no idea. I just had no idea that it could get destroyed. Um, so, yeah, why not? I'll just convert this. It'll be super great. Um, so. It's my okay. It's it's my birthday, <laughs> and I get this this the the people that monitor our Nagios for us and call and and say the site is down. Nobody can get to the site. It's just a blank page. Um, I had no idea what had gone on. I had, I had some theories, possibly maybe some you know. There's every I want to blame everything except for what I had done. <laughs> <laughs> and um, cut to me like actually comparing line by line my SQL dumps of something that was good and something that was bad until I finally saw that there was one single, that one single value got blown away um, because my SAM um, corrupts itself pretty easily. Um, and that is something I am a subject matter expert at at my current company. The real DBA, the one that actually is certified and stuff, um, he doesn't have a lot of experience fixing uh, corrupt tables that are my SAM. I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, he actually comes to me for some things. And if he watches this video, he'll, 
yeah. <laughs> um, so that was one of the bad cases. Um, and then a more recent MySAM thing at my current place of employee, um, there was just a massive registry of, there's, okay, so there's this, these pair of databases and they have more data than any normal customer site, their internal use. And we were trying to, they were hardy, hardy uh, Ubuntu, very, very old. Yeah. And, and because they were so big and so important, nobody had ever upgraded the poor little guys. Um, and it was version 5092, and oh, by the way, Extra Backup, which if anybody's used Extra Backup, put out by Percona, fantastic tool, will not run on something so old. So I can't do, I can't do a MySQL dump. I can't do, because data important and long and locky, and it won't get much consistency over the time it takes to dump that much stuff onto, from EBS. Um, and, uh, can't run extra backup complaints. What the heck do I do? Anyway, so they were just so the it was determined that we just upgrade to Lucid, upgrade the MySQL version or something. I don't I don't remember. It's very foggy because it was very traumatic and it took a long period of time. But um, somebody was running the upgrade, and it ran out of disk space during the upgrade, and um, suddenly we no longer have HA. Like so, our nice little replica pair safety net. You know, we're upgrading one, breaks, the other one's like shot. So it becomes my problem at this point. Um, and it became my problem for a long time. <laughs> um, and it was, it started out with it being that my SAM table, but um, the real problem ended up actually being in, in no DB, which was hard for me to accept because I like to say, it's, you know, clearly the problem is my sound, that thing should not exist, and it's, yeah. So I had to, I don't know what a good phrase would be, but I had to admit that perhaps my precious in ODB that I'd been trying to push on the person who insisted on my SAM was actually the biggest problem on the server. Anyway, so cut away to some EBS snapshots and some working in a dev environment and mounting those snapshots and a whole bunch of tests. And I discover that there's this one bad table. And I've anonymized the names of the table, um, the, where the database name is meh. Because <laughs> anyway, so um, this is the data structure. So I don't know if people at all familiar with what's going on for creating this table. It's OK. So there's some numbers. And there's a giant unique, unique key. I will I'll repeat, unique key. And um, perhaps I, I, I've come to the conclusion that perhaps based on the errors that there are maybe some duplicate keys in there. So um, I regenerate the indexes seems like a good thing to do. Um, so in order to do that, you can run alter table bleh, um, or in this case, uh, meh, nodule, <laughs> anyway. Um, and it says, er, can't do it, duplicate key. And it's this three-way key here. Um, so that means that somehow, over the course of some great times with whatever has happened before, um, the unique keys were violated inside. Um, I have no idea what happened, how this got put in there. They should have been like, no, can't do that, duplicate key. And um, no. So a lot of testing. And MySQL dump, by the way, on this one table creates an infinite loop. And it, it, you realize this as your dump is larger than the actual table <laughs> on disk. Like, OK, something's really wrong here, because that should never happen, because just the way the size happens and the bloat and text versus an ODB. So, um, so I realized something was very, very bad. So um, in retrospect, this was really, really smart of me. Like, I have good intuition. I just don't have a lot of book learning. Um, <laughs> so um, what I did was I took that table and I said, how many keys do you think you have? And, <laughs> and what is the maximum value of one of these, you know, one of these things that's indexed? OK, I'm going to divide and conquer. So I used basic data structures. Like, I will find the problem parts of the data. And I don't know how this worked, but basically, so I ended up doing my bad bash. Um, 
I write a lot of Bash that writes my SQL that writes things that, you know, there's this nasty Bash Pearl SQL trilogy in my life <laughs> <laughs> all the time, and it makes me happy. Um, so anyway, so I automated the table creation. So I made a whole bunch of dummy tables like that original table structure. And then I automated with Bash the basic picking and choosing, like select this range, stick it into this table. Select this range, stick it in this table. So I will find the bad part. It never actually found the bad part. It remains a mystery. Like it just said, OK, you know, a couple days later after turning through all of the data, it completed fine. So then I took those 33 tables or whatever and merged them back down. And that's how I fixed the table. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Mystery, but um, I mean, I, at Percona Live this year, I actually told people about this, and they were like, "Yeah, that makes sense based on blah 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 blah." I am not a DBA, <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, uh, that was my solution. There's some great bash there, yay! <laughs> um, so anyway, that was that, and I had to admit that an ODB can get really, really messed up. So. Do you take questions now? <sighs> Uh, I am so close to almost being done, so later. Okay, okay. so benchmarking. Um, got to the new job at my current employer, and I'm like, I'm going to revolutionize your databases. And um, they were just using this really crummy my.cnf generated by Puppet, just take some variables, make some threads, make some buffer pool, and it's all magic. And it actually works really well, considering. So. Um, Two months into my employ there, I send out this email to like the boss's boss and all these teams. And I'm like, I have found this amazing thing. I just did the basic Percona benchmarking, and I'm getting all these transactions per second. But our default is not doing this, and it's this difference. And it actually resulted in um, the founder or the CTO or whatever of Percona like reaching out to us because it was at. <laughs> And I didn't know this because I wasn't, at the time I was still a new employee, I didn't have access to their bug tracking. Or not their bug tracking, but their in, like, customer support portal thing. Um, anyway, so I, I had these great results. And I was like, look at me. I am going to be awesome. And then first there was like all of these. I love my coworkers because they will say, hmm, I'm not sure if your methodology is quite you know, there. I ran some tests. Can I get onto your test bed system? And, and they are really fantastic, and I like being told, like, I like being corrected. And um, it, it was a very long email thread. This was number one. <laughs> um, but um, at the time, we didn't know that there was an actual bug in that version of MySQL that made the thread pool um, re the, the bootstrapping, essentially, of the thread pool faster. Um, well, it was, it was flawed. Like this one variable in the my.cnf was creating this, this phenomenon that I saw. And anyway, but yeah, so I was super excited. Like, and it was very depressing as, as I'm watching the emails come in and I'm like, oh gosh. But it, I mean, I've made some lasting friends from it. Um, and I use them as my, like, is my testing good? And these people are great at testing, and they're great at being blunt and direct, and you know, like giving you really constructive criticism. So, yeah, it was good. And what I rely on more than anything now is actual data. Um, not no more MySQL tuner. We fling stats into StatsD, like numbers. And um, that database before that said there were way too many um, temporary tables per, per second. No, there really aren't that many. And um, yeah. The problem with this, and then we also have this script, which I plan to t make it not be PHP, but I did get into a bit of a disagreement with my colleague about what language it should be in. Um, I felt it should be Perl, because the entire Percona toolkit is in Perl. Um, but I have to write it in Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, sorry. Um, Anyway, um, the query cache hit rate, see the hit rate? We're actually like computing that at the interval of our choice um, with this tool that was written by my, my dear colleague and mentor now. Um, the hit rate's very low, which means it's not even really finding what it needs in it. And there aren't that many prunes per second. I have seen way more many prunes per second. Um, so when a database is having problems and I see like the symptoms now, 
I actually just experimentally turn off query cache and see what happens to these numbers. It's live testing, and it's worked out well for me. Um, so rather than my SQL tuner, I actually look at PT Query Digest. I'm, if anybody ever has a question in this world about using a Percona Toolkit tool, I'm, I've probably used it and am a decent resource. Um, so yeah, that's what I rely on now. No more of my SQL tuner. And yes, breaking things is learning. Um, <laughs> and you should celebrate like these, these learning things with your peers so that they don't go down the same path. So, or should they choose to, you know, they'll recover quicker. Um, yeah, do love that piggy. Anyway, so um, this is my contact detail. Um, there's my work email address. Um, I'm not really a huge user of Twitter. Um, occasionally, there's maybe one really horrible query that I, whenever it gets bubbles up in some customer site, um, I will actually post an excerpt of the logic. It's like where if zero equals one and all this other stuff. So um, that's that's what you do have look for, to look forward to and some other quotable retweets because sometimes. My, the things I say get tweeted by um, shit op says. <laughs> um, and, and then I'll retweet them if I know about them getting tweeted. Um, anyway, so, and I'm also trying to resurrect something that's never really existed, which is a, um, my SQL user group in the area because I love to talk my SQL and, um, and I'm trying to get better. And, and I'm fine with giving out advice and free advice, and it may or may not be good. Um, <laughs> so yeah, there's my details, and that's my bunny, and that's how I wake up every morning. Um, <laughs> he's Captain Perseus. Um, yeah. So let's see. And then yeah, these are these will be online, um, but the credits for the two photos that weren't mine are up there, kind of the source, and. Um, then the link to the MySQL tuner in case you do want to see the Perl and maybe be a better or a more not, you know, a, what's the opposite of a verse. But if you, if you wish to make it better and make it more useful, that's cool. And then eventually I will hopefully open source the tools that we actually do use that, um, yes, I really, really want to. Um, uh, this tool here, which is just like amazing. Um, so sometime, I hope in the next month, I will not only get better at Ruby beyond like hello world, um, <laughs> I will create something that's of use to other people. So anyway, all right. What do, do, the, the which charts that I deleted? Oh, that wasn't deleted. They just get formatted. Like they just, I didn't like. This is a screenshot directly <laughs> from our web um, that has a whole bunch of things. There's actually it scrolls down further to CPU metrics and other good stuff. So, all right, questions. Uh, if you go back to the time when you had to sort of divide and conquer. Yep. Um, there was a magical number. Uh, no, forward. Sorry. Forward. Forward. Yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah uh, no, sorry. Yeah, that was forward one more, and then yeah, there, uh, there was like a magical number of last, last dig plus fourteen thousand one hundred sixty-five. <laughs> that was that was from the actual math. This is like actual. I took it out of Jira, put it in Sublime for like pretty colors, and and put it there. That was the actual number from which I was dividing. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, it was. Yeah, it's not magic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. It's not like. If I'm ever working with, <laughs> 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 like that's an important number to keep in mind. Yes, you should know that number. The, yeah, the, the slices I was churning out. I was essentially sharding my data, sort of. Oh no, there were a ton of duplicate keys, tons. Because normally I would like, I'm gonna just fix this one with some wild cards and a creative replace into or delete, but no. Um, there were far, far too many, and the rabbit hole just is bad news. So you said you, you sliced it, and then when you recombined it, it worked, or did you clean it first? Didn't need to clean it. I have no idea what happened. Um, People had no soul. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Was the new table the same size as the old one? No. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a NoDB, so a NoDB, like, 
<laughs> well, in ODB, you can never trust the size on disk because whenever a delete has happened, it leaves a hole. Sparse. Is this in rows? Um, I. I <laughs> I always, okay, so it's, I tend to blame every single problem lately on must be like a, a corrupt index or something. That's my current go-to mm -hmm. blame. <laughs> um, so that, that stands my, my blame is just something with a little corrupty and I have no idea how. <laughs> that works. That's, you know, yeah. missing the data. <laughs> so, I mean, no. Yeah. It, but that was another solid couple. Of, that was months, actually, in preparation of timing. And like, it'll take me this much time with the live data, and, and they can afford me this much downtime. And it, then it took an entire weekend to do the actual run of the real stuff. Yeah, good times. I choose this. I actually um, recently, there, uh, I was just in the management talk, of, you know, and they were talking about um, job changes and people getting bored. As a sysadmin, I was very, I was, just give me the database tickets, give me the memcached tickets, you know, don't stop giving me Gluster issues or SSL issues or, you know, disk space upsize, like boring tickets. I was bored out of my skull until I got a database ticket. So I actually talked to my boss and to a couple of other places within the, the company before leaving because, um, yeah, I was very close. <laughs> to uh, finding another line of work if I couldn't just do just database. So um, in my head, it's kind of like if, you know, you finally decide to move in with your partner, like you, you, you've been apart, you know, there's times apart. Now I'm just with that person 100%, um, and that person is databases. <laughs> That's how my personal life goes, no. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I've made the 100% commitment to just databases at my current employer with a gazillion databases, so I have no shortage of work. Yes? What would it mean to you to become a DBA? Um, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm considered one. But you what's, don't self-identify as a DBA. I feel like I need to know the MySQL internals down to such a minutia in order to call myself a DBA, because when I interview DBAs, that is what I interview for. Like, look at this, do not, you know, just, just tell me some very cool things and, you know, actually have it be legit. Um, so. Yeah. Uh, I, I had a corporate job where there were just you know, Oracle DBAs across the aisle from me, and they were mm -hmm. very proud of, of what they were. And it seemed like, well, they passed whatever Oracle certification tests were, and therefore they were DBAs. Seeing the same as, as like years of experience, and it seems like you, you have the years of experience. You would think so, being you know using it since the first public beta. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I've had some debates about Oracle DBAs versus MySQL DBAs versus Postgres DBAs. Um, I would prefer to think of myself as someone agnostic, and their training make sure that they know like exactly the run book that Oracle would have them do. Um, there's a use for an Oracle DBA. I just, I, I have, I have one, I've, I've taken one actual legit course for my SQL given by Oracle, but um, no certifications. Um, so. Any more questions? Oh, the, the MySQL thing, the user group I'm trying to get going again, I'm looking for space. My space in my building is not so great because the security guard leaves at 6 and then the building's locked and that causes issues getting up to the third floor. So if anybody has user, like a... a one? Yeah, that would help. It's currently on Meetup, but once I do get something, I'll post it on Caligator too. So. Anyway, that's all. Thanks. <laughs> <Hey. laughs>